Hello everybody. Today what we're going to do is we're going to set up a file that we have, an SDL file, and get it ready to print on our 3D printer and we're going to use the software called Replicator G. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start off with either an .obj file or an .stl file and I have my .stl file ready to go here uh, that a student has made. It's of a it's a replica of the Stanley Cup, the trophy uh, that is won in the National Hockey League uh, championship. So first thing we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to launch Replicator G. So we'll have to go into our uh, launch pad and look for that. Let me get out of this here. Somehow get out of this here. There we go. And Replicator G is this um, bright yellow application here. So I'll launch that. And usually it will launch up a previous project of some kind. Okay, yep, it does. It has the old project, uh, the last project I worked on already open. So what I'm going to do here is make that full screen. And I'm going to go up here to File and create a new file. And then I'm going to go to File and Open. And once I go and find my uh, STL file, in this case it's the 3D Lord Stanley circle.stl, I'm going to go and open up this file here. Now, uh, sometimes this happens where you end up with, you, you don't see anything. If you click around and view and move, um, it is kind of a tricky program. Maybe I should go and do this. Why are you doing this during my tutorial? Now I'm going to start cursing. This always happens. We don't have to curse when we don't. That's not nice. Well, I'm not seeing my file here at all. Um, so I can't go on with this right now. Let me just try to see if I can open this again and see. Once I open it, whether it will show up. See, it's here, but it's not showing up. Preview, default. Uh -huh. Sometimes this happens with Replicator G. So I'm going to quit Replicator G. And then maybe see I can open with Replicator G. Ah, now we have it. It opened up. So I got around the little issue there. Like I said, sometimes the uh, visualization just won't work for us. So next thing we're going to need to do, you can see that tiny little file right there. Next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to make sure that we go over here on the right hand side and we choose move and then I'm going to choose center and put on platform and that way it's on the platform here. Now the other thing that I can do is I can uh, zoom out a little bit but I will need a mouse in order to do that. I don't, I don't have one so uh, if I have a mouse hooked up I can scroll out kind of allows me to see. In the meantime, I'm going to go over to the View tab, and I'm on the default view right now, but if I want to look at the XY axis, it looks like this. Another name for that is going to be Top XZ. That's going to be your front view, and the YZ, I believe, is going to be your uh, side view. And I've just had a very helpful student help me with finding a mouse. So now I have one, and I can zoom out on this. If I left mouse button uh, and drag, I can go and I can... Uh, rotate this any way that I want. So once I get that done, uh, I can go and I can begin to scale it. So when I click on scale, I can go here and one of the most interesting things to do is to, is to touch fill build space. Now when I do that, it's going to make a huge, this is the largest copy that I can make of this actual uh, of this actual model here. Now I can also just click and drag to make it larger and it makes it difficult to tell how big this is and we will explore sizing in other tutorials and how to get the sizing correct. But for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click fill build space and that is the largest that I can make this. I'm going to make that a bit smaller so it's just a, a smaller print to start off with here and see if this thing is going to work the way we want it to. Now as I look at this, I'm going to go over to view again. When I look at this um, model, I'm going to look at it from the front and uh, zoom in on it a little bit so we can really see what's going on. This is going to have no problem building the way that 3D printers work. They can build on this base and go up here like this, but once I get to this point, 
um, it's going to have no problem. But once I get up here, how is it going to build this? Because there's no support for it. Uh, as you learn 3D printing, you'll see that you need to build in support on the sides. So this is going to have some support included with it and probably will have to be cleaned off. So we'll see how that goes as we move through. So I've got the size here. I could move it if I wanted to. If I wanted to rotate it, I could do this. If I wanted to um, go like this, for instance, or do the uh, X rotation or the Y X rotation, Y rotation, Y rotation. But this is looking pretty good for me here. So I'm going to lay this flat. Oh, that was not good. I'm actually going to just try to undo those two moves by hitting Command C. And that looks pretty good. And um, just to show you the other controls here, we already did view, we did move, so I'm going to again center and put on platform just in case I just messed that up. And mirror, I haven't used this, uh, but this is, I'm sure, in case you wanted to make duplicates. And then finally, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to generate G code. Now, up here, this connection error. This Replicator G program is used to connect to the 3D printer, and if you are connected by USB, it will give you status monitor. Uh, it will show you the temperature of your extruders, it will show you the temperature of your platform, uh, it will show you everything that you need to know about, um, about the status of the printer as it's printing. But you don't have to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to generate some G code, and then we're going to put it on an SD card. Okay, um, excuse me, we're going to generate some G code and then we're going to convert that into an SX3 um, file. Is that what it is? Uh, we'll get to that in a minute in a little while. I think I may have misspoken there. Uh, X3G, that's what it's going to be. Uh, so I'm, I'm ready to do this, so I'm going to click generate G code. And um, I'm going to go and first save this. Save the model now. Yeah, I'm going to save this. Okay. So it's going to be named the same thing as well. Now, we only have our left extruder with filament in it. And so we have to use our left extruder. Also, we want to make sure that we're using Replicator 2 slicing defaults. And we're going to use a raft or support. A raft is going to be a little, uh, a little, little layer that's going to lay underneath our print and help it stick to the bed really easily. And we also need to use support, which we already talked about. Now here, use support material. We're going to need some full support for this model. And I'll show you on video what this is going to look like afterwards. Yes, we're going to use this. Yes, we're going to use this. The settings. Please copy in the same exact settings. I've gone through many trial and error. And one of the things that I've come up with is that you... Um, is that uh, from different websites, especially Flash, Flashforge Forum, uh, that I found, um, I found that this setting here, uh, 60, uh, 60 and 90, is going to be pretty good, and it looks like I ended up going with 65, uh, I'm sorry, I read wrong, 65 and 90, and that's right here, 65 is your feed rate, rate, and your travel rate is going to be, travel feed rate is going to be 90. Print temperature, 220, very important, because this is going to, um, that's the temperature our extruder is at, so it melts our filament at 220. We're using PLA filament for this, these settings. Uh, the number of shells means how much on the outside, and the layer height is going to be the resolution. And we're at a pretty low resolution here. Your object infill, leave that at 10. That's the honeycomb that goes inside. Once I'm done and I have all of this set, I don't need to go through this because we are good to go. Oh, wait, I should. Your plastic, this is by default. Our filament is 1.75. Uh, millimeters wide and we have our nozzle diameter that's by default as well for our printer and I'm going to just stay away from that and I'll click generate G code now this takes a little while I click it says, always gives you this warning every time and this is going to take quite a while as it goes through and builds layer after layer so we will just wait and I'll end up fast forwarding this part of the video Wonderful. So now we are finished with this, and uh, the one thing that we really need to pay attention to here is to be able to manipulate this G-code a little bit. 
Let me move my screen over so you see what I'm doing here. And um, and full screen it as well. Here is the model, and here is the G code. Okay, uh, that error that I spoke of in the beginning of the tutorial. Many times when you reopen a file that you've already had, you go back to the model, it'll be disappeared. Uh, like I said, try to relaunch, uh, try to try to right click on a file to open it, that kind of stuff. Uh, but for right now, we have a new file, so I'm going to save this. And when I go back to my uh, Finder window and begin to look at this over here, I now have this new file that's called the same name as my STL, and it's also now in a .g code file. Okay. G code is basically a really simple way of um, programming and telling the, the printer everything it needs to know in order to move around. It's a really long document and it's going to give the coordinates on where to go and move around. The only thing you need to know about this is in the beginning, I'm going to move this over to make sure that you can see it. In the beginning of the G code, find the line that's called M109. This is the heat bed temperature. Okay. And for our PLA filament, it is best to change this number, this 110, down to 50. Okay, so S50. And then we're going to come over here, File, Save. Save our G code file again. That is really important. If you forget to do that, this will not work. Okay, and now we're ready for our last step. The last step is going to be to come up here and convert this, not model, to G code. We could have used that before instead of using this. Build to file for use with SD card. That's what we want to do. So we're going to click this button here. Very important to go down immediately and check your format. This is the old version uh, with firmware earlier than version 7.0. We want X3G. X3G, not S3G. Very important. Also, I don't like to have any type of equal signs or minuses, and a lot of times that happens with files uh, as they're being uh, built here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click save. And what that's going to do is it's going to build me a new file. And it's telling me what it's doing up here. And it's done. Okay. Now the last thing I need to do is grab my SD card and copy that file over to my SD card. So I insert my SD card in the computer. And in this case, it's going to have a name on it and probably has some other files. So let me look around in here. I don't want to launch photos. Here it is. In this case, it was CVTV, the name of the card. I'm going to open that up and see what's in there. Uh, here's some other files that I was working on. And I'm going to add this one now. So I'm going to go into 3D printer, get into my print queue, and find this new file. And there it is. It's this one. X3G. I'm going to go and put that right into this file here. It's on there now and we're ready to go. So all I have to do now is take this SD card out of my computer, put it into the printer, and tell it to print, which we'll learn about next.